Welcome to this video on how to knit the legs with long feet for my painted Cricut animals. This is the pattern you need to use if you want to make shoes for your animal. The shoes don't fit very well on the round feet. Here are some examples of legs with long feet. Some animals like the kangaroo and this rabbit typically have longer feet so I use this pattern for them. In this case the feet don't have socks because it's just long feet. Other animals like these need the long feet because I want them to have shoes. In the case of this elephant, cheetah, and skunk, I've used the version of the pattern that makes them look like they're wearing socks. For this ballerina hippo, I do want shoes but I don't want socks with the ballet slippers, so I just knit the version of the long feet without socks. Just for reference, this lamb shows the difference between the basic round legs and the legs with long feet. The pattern that I'm showing in this video can be used for both the version of the legs with or without socks. It's really just a matter of changing colors and I'll show you where to do that. You'll need the same yarn that you used for the body of the animal and knitting needles that are at least two sizes smaller than what's recommended for the yarn that you're using. If you're knitting legs with socks, then you'll need some yarn in the sock color for that. You'll also need a pair of scissors, a tapestry needle, some way to keep track of which row you're on, and some stuffing. For this pattern, you only need to know how to do stockinette, basic increases and decreases, and mattress stitch for the seams. If you want different colored socks, then you'll also need to know how to change to a new color. And as with all my pattern videos, I'll tell you where to do these stitches, but I won't take time to explain how to do the individual stitches. Just a few more things before I get to the pattern. Don't let my knitting style throw you off. Just knit and purl in the way that's most comfortable for you. Please like and share my videos and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Click show more in the description area for links to more videos and information. Share photos of your completed project on my Facebook page. You can find a link for that in the description area too. And finally, if you'd like a written pattern, I've given links to the shops where I sell them in the description area as well. I like to knit both legs at the same time. This is a great way of making sure that both are the same length. You can knit both legs at once by using both ends of your skein of yarn. Use one end for one leg and the other end for the other leg. For simplicity's sake in this video, however, I'll only be knitting one leg at a time. Okay, let's get started. These legs start at the bottom of the feet and work up to the hip. I'm knitting a leg with white socks, so I'll start with white yarn. If you're knitting plain long feet without socks, just cast on with the regular leg color. Cast on 18 stitches in either the sock or leg color. Leave a long enough tail to sew the foot seam with later. If you're knitting the plain legs without socks, then you'll need to leave an especially long tail here. On row one, do a repeating pattern of knitting once and then knitting into both the front and back of the next stitch. Continue this pattern across to the last two stitches and then just knit both of them. At this point, you should have 26 stitches. Purl across on row 2. Remember that I knit in combination style so my purling might look a little strange. On row 3, 
knit three and then increase once and do this pattern across to the last two stitches which you'll just knit. At the end of this row you'll have 34 stitches. For the next six rows, you'll just do stockinette. So purl across on row four, knit across on row five. Purl across on row six. Knit across on row seven. Purl across on row eight. And knit across on row nine. On row 10, purl the first five stitches and then purl two together 12 times. Then purl the last five stitches. You should have 22 stitches. On row 11, just knit across. On row 12, purl the first five stitches, then purl two together six times. Then purl the last five stitches, and you should have 16 stitches. On row 13, just knit across. On row 14, purl the first six stitches, then purl two together two times. Then purl the last six stitches. You should have 14 stitches. If you're knitting plain legs without socks, from this point on, you'll just continue in stockinette and then bind off and knit on row 35. You can skip ahead in the video to the part that explains how to sew the leg together. If you're knitting the leg with socks, then you'll need to continue in the sock color for rows 15 through 18, knitting on rows 15 and 17, and purling on rows 16 and 18. 
If you're knitting a sock on row 19, we'll create a little top edge for the sock by purling instead of knitting as you'd do if you weren't knitting a stock. On row 20, we finish the top edge of the sock by knitting this row. Remember that if you're not knitting the sock, then you just continue normal stockinette on this row. On row 21, change to the leg color and be sure to leave enough of a tail here that you can sew the leg seam with later. Knit across. Rows 22 through 34 continue in stock and net again, purling on row 22 and the even rows and knitting on the odd rows. Row 35 is the last row, so you'll bind off and knit on this row. Cut the yarn, leaving enough of a tail to sew with later. I like to start sewing the seams with the tails at the bottom of the foot. I sew the bottom seam first. and then sew the back seam of the leg up to the top. When I'm knitting socks, I switch to the leg color once I get to that part.
When you get to the top, remember to save the remaining yarn tails for sewing the legs onto the body. And that's it. You're done with the leg with the long feet. When you begin to assemble all the pieces, you'll stuff just the foot, not the entire leg, and that helps the legs hang more naturally. If you haven't already knitted the body, there are links for the different body options in the description area. There's also a video that gives my favorite tips and tricks for assembling your animal once you've finished knitting all the pieces. Thanks for watching this video. Don't forget to like it and subscribe to my channel so you can get notified when I release new animal and clothing patterns. And share a photo of your completed project on my Facebook page. See you next time!